All right, folks, uh, y'all have seen all of this stuff by critical race theory. You've seen uh, right wingers out here lying, just making stuff up. Uh, just, you got people showing up at school board meetings, acting a damn fool. Uh, and, and, but, but just so you understand uh, how crazy this whole thing is, you, you have to understand when folk are constantly hit with lies and how they can't even tell you what the hell critical race theory is. Uh, so watch this video. The folks with the good liars did this video talking to a man in Virginia, okay, who says CRT is the most important issue until he's asked, what is it? Okay, watch. What's the most important issue in the governor's race here in Virginia? Getting back to the basics of teaching children, not teaching them critical race theory. And, uh, and what is critical race theory? Well, I'm not going to get into the specifics of it because I don't understand it that much, but it's something that I don't, the, what little bit that I know I don't care for. And, and what have you heard that, that you don't, well, that you I'm don't not, like? Well, I'm, I'm not going to, you know, I don't, uh, I don't, I don't have that much knowledge on it, but okay. it's something that I'm not, that I don't care for. What's the most important issue in the governor's race here in Virginia? Wow. I don't care for it. I don't know what the hell it is, but I watched Fox News and told me I, that I should be against it. Conservatives have led to bans all across the country, Idaho, Oklahoma, Tennessee, Texas, uh, Iowa, New Hampshire, Arizona, South Carolina, literally banning something that, that doesn't even exist in their schools. 20 other states have introduced legislation that would restrict or eliminate it in schools. The origins, of course, the anti-critical race theory movement are unclear, hmm, but a team of researchers discovered billionaire, uh, one of the Koch brothers, one has since d died, were funding research and campaigns against critical race theory uh, through all of the various uh, groups that they fund. The Uncoke campus team has done extensive research on how this divisive campaign intentionally spread like wildfire. Joining us now, now from DC, is Executive Director of Uncoke My Campus, Jasmine Banks. Jasmine, glad to have you on the show. Now, he, now, here's what I find to be real interesting, uh, Jasmine. And first of all, people were referred to the Koch brothers, but one of them died last year. Okay, so, but the one who is still living, he's given a shitload of money to the United, to the Thurgood Marshall Fund, okay, targeting HBCUs. Yet, that's what the left hand's doing. But then the right hand is over here driving the very things that target black people. Mm-hmm. Yes. Yeah, absolutely. Um, you know, that's a question that folks often ask me. And, you know, I'm from Oklahoma and Arkansas. I'm here in the South. And there are plenty of folks who um, fly Confederate flags that support policy that disproportionately is anti-Black, but claim they have Black friends. And citing um, funding, you know, the United Negro uh, college Fund, Thurgood, Thurgood Marshall, um, you know, the Coke Network has been incredibly strategic at identifying folks within um, identities that they can use as shields um, against criticism. And so part of our analysis at Uncoke My Campus is really encouraging folks to adapt some rigor and to look at the material outcomes of their investment. Um, what is the percentage of no strings attached funding being provided to historical black colleges and universities versus uh, think tanks, advocates, academics that actually deepen structural inequity and keep us from realizing progressive futures that would disproportionately advantage uh, black and non-black people of color. So that really is what we always invite people back to a place of curiosity about. Um, and the evidence is that disproportionately they are funding white nationalists, neo-Nazis, um, going all the way back to the Tea Party and beyond. And the policy recommendations that they advocate for, as well as the idea production within the academy um, and within their lobbying branches, disproportionately erode the climate, um, put communities of color at risk, and pad the pockets of corporations that are already run amok and destabilizing um, our, our attempts at realizing a truly inclusive democracy. See, th the mistake I believe the media made here, Jasmine, is that they, they always fall for the okey doke where some BS is created by the right 
and then they call mainstream media out, and then they go, oh, we got to talk about it, which is exactly what they want to do. What y'all are doing is exposing actually how the thing, thing all came about. That's one of the reasons why I haven't wasted time having, well, let's really explain what a critical race theory is. No, that's what they want. Christopher Rufo wants you to book him on the show. Because when you book him on the show, he now has infiltrated your booking process and your editorial plan. That's their strategy. Yes, it's a comms cultural tactic. You get entrenched. Um, we we see when our elders and ancestors and you know across the Black liberation diaspora movements taught us that racism ultimately is a distraction, right? It's a, it's it's a moment where we're we're defending our humanity, where we're trying to make a case. Um, and and while we're busy doing that, folks who are opposed to our liberation are out there building political power. And that's exactly what this moral panic has done. It has destabilized school systems um, on the national level. It has shifted narrative and conversation. All the while, Koch-funded lobbyists have been working overtime on both the grassroots and the astroturf level to uh, keep Biden's agenda from being realized, one that could actually create some structural change, provide some social safety nets, uh, re, re, uh, you know, reinvigorate trust in our economic process and our democracy. Um, so it really is, it is a, I keep telling people, we're getting hoodwinked, y'all, like we have to, don't be bamboozled by this disinformation loop cycle with, by the way, media sources that are often um, also connected to Coke funding. And so it really is um, this really powerful disinformation um, um, loop that we have to really speak facts and, and stop meeting them at this, at this place where we're explaining away what the threat is and we're naming who's calling it a threat in the first place and who is a threat to ultimately, um, which are corporations, uh, the ultra wealthy, who don't want to see um, us realize the things that we've been striving for since and before uh, the civil rights movement. It really is. is about they hate everything about diversity, about inclusion, about equity, about race. That's their whole strategy, which Rufo said before, let's just dump everything into the critical race theory bucket. So therefore, anything applies. Now, all of a sudden, let's go after these textbooks. Glenn Youngkin going after Beloved in Virginia. Now you have uh, Texas Governor Greg Abbott. Let's take these textbooks, these, these books out of the classroom. They already want to change the, change the curriculum because what they want is they want to maintain the illusion of whiteness, of white supremacy in our textbooks, in what is being taught, because that's how they have been able to control. Yes, it ultimately goes back to this psychosocial, and I would even say, I mean, I know Reverend Barber has um, named this as well, so this like psychospiritual component of white anxiety and white terror. And, and the limitation- I call it white fear. Yes, absolutely. Um, and, and the limitation of, of the white imagination that their kind of identity politics is a very specific form of white identity that the, the most terrifying thought is that we will do, communities of color will do to white identities what has been done to our people, a kind of dispossession, um, a lack of abundance, um, a lack of political power. Um, and, and the reality is that in, in the kind of inclusive democracy, in the kind of economy, in the kind of like global movements that we're trying to see realize, there's room for white folks who care about justice. There's room for uh, white people who, who dissent and disagree. Um, but this subjugation and ultimate destruction of the black identity so that uh, wealth for the ultimate elite can be maintained is unacceptable. Um, and, and that includes our indigenous uh, siblings who who also, who are part of that legacy as well. The panel, first up is Mustafa Satago Ali. So how do we address this power and privilege dynamic that's currently going on uh, with the investments that they've been making in the misinformation? I'm sorry, it broke up. <laughs> Technology. Mustafa, ask, ask the question again. I was saying, how do we address the power and privilege dynamic that is currently going on when they're making these significant investments uh, in disinformation. 
Yeah, absolutely. Well, with with Uncoke strategy, our first call is to disrupt their their political strategy, right? Which is them deeply investing in universities with strings attached. Um, we need to see students and faculty, folks in the academy who do not want their institutions leveraged for this radical right right wing strategy um, to hold their universities accountable. Then we have to organize, right? We have to see the same sort of generous funding of the solutions and the kind of beautiful. Uh, uh, you know, beloved state and and more just future that we want to see across our multiple movement sectors. Um, but ultimately, it's it starts with divestment and, and following the money and understanding the true landscape. And, and Uncoke organizes uh, students, educators, uh, community stakeholders every day um, to, to do just what you what you said, which was to check the power and to really under, help administrations see how they've been captured and how they're being used as these image laundering institutions to obfuscate um, ultimately what Charles Koch and his cadre of wealthy uh, right wing donors have been doing for over 50 years now. Michael. Hi, how are you? Hi. I, I'm curious on what your thoughts are. Uh, related to kind of this disinformation conspiracy theory folks that think, oh, there's, a, there's, a, there's another side to the Holocaust. Or slavery really should only be in a couple pages of a chapter of a book, of a history book. What do you, I mean, we know it's relative, Roland mentioned earlier, it's kind of this white supremacy agenda. But how do you combat that? How do we combat those people that, that believe there's a, another side to the Holocaust, or the slavery really wasn't that bad. I mean, folks had jobs and they had a house. I mean, what's the problem? Yeah, yeah. Well, the reality is those folks are in such um, group think dynamics. Um, we see this with QAnon. We saw this with the Tea Party. We've seen this with other um, you know, corporate cults where there's this level of concentrated information and enculturation where it becomes this internalized belief system. And so deprogramming is really important. Um, showing, not telling is really important. Um, maintaining our calm and not, um, you know, uh, ridiculing and being and, and, and coming with a kind of openness that can allow us to okay. bring those That's fine. I figure what engage that. in civil society dialogue. Um, that's really, really important tactic in, in that space. That is a long game, though. Um, if anyone has ever seen, um, you know, folks who have been in these disinformation propaganda, like even again, thinking about QAnon in this political moment, those folks need to be deprogrammed. Um, we also need to be making sure that part of our movement work is building sites of belonging um, that are irresistible. Many of these people have also been dispossessed, and 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 the gag here is that the the Koch network has been utilizing um, automated sites of belonging, like the very radical evangelical conservative movements, um, to to be, become attractive to these folks. So what places are we creating belonging where we can be inviting these folks in, where we can be having conversation, and where we can be providing political education that really acts as a buffer and deprograms against these kind of belief systems? Teresa? One, thank you for um, the vision of actually putting this executive, um, by being the executive director of this organization, because believe me, I have seen my share of communications that has been coming from this organization. And it, believe me, as a communication professional, it's like I, I continuously have to explain uh, the deprogramming of critical race theory and, and not having people think that, oh, slavery really wasn't a big deal. It actually presented structure. I'm just like, whoa, buddy. So um, what can we do? And I love asking these questions, especially with executive directors. What can we do in other cities and other states to ensure that we are also helping to put forward the same vision in other cities and um, states if, since you maybe don't have the capacity right now in terms of resources, but that's a whole nother issue we need to divulge in. But what can we do as the everyday person um, in order to help your efforts? 
Yeah, well, of course, we're we're like most uh, Black-led organizations. We're tiny and underfunded, but folks are using our resources. So any people that you can send our way who want to volunteer or fund us or resource us, um, invite us in the coalition spaces. We love talking to folks. We have brilliant students and educators who are doing brave work, who are being you know targeted every day by these sort of things. Um, but in your own in your own places and spaces, making sure that you're building out coalition and sharing our reports. Um, sharing our toolkits, um, as well as just naming that that this is an actual billionaire scheme to create disinformation so no one holds them accountable for the wealth that they are amassing unchecked on the backs of Black Indigenous folks, um, not just historically, but in this moment. Um, and I think that motivates folks, right? Like the, the Coke Network a couple of months ago um, had this groundbreaking story that Jane Mayer uncovered where the For the People Act, they had done a market research themselves to see if, if the billionaire tax taxing billionaires and checking billionaires um, impact on our elections was favorable. And they found that it was favorable. So they were going to do the quote under the dome tactic to gut the For the People Act because our communities disproportionately wanted it. So unifying messages that speak to actually the people on the ground, we are more united than we've been in a very long time. It's a disinformation campaigns and it's the moral panic outrage of very few number of actors. Um, that are creating this dissension between our communities. Um, so those are some ways that, that you can step up and, and support our work. All right, then. Jasmine Banks, we appreciate it. Thanks a lot. Thank you. Folks, back to our Mark Unfiltered video in just one moment. Time to be smart. Roland Martin's doing this every day. Oh, no punches! Thank you, Roland Martin, for always giving voice to the issues. Look for Roland Martin in the whirlwind, to quote Marcus Garvey again. The video looks phenomenal, so I'm really excited to see it on my big screen. Support this man, Black Media. He makes sure that our stories are told. See, this difference between Black Star Network and Black-owned media and something like CNN. I gotta defer to the brilliance of Dr. Carr and to the brilliance of the Black Star Network. I am rolling with rolling all the way. Honored to be on a show that you own, a Black man <laughs> owns the show. Folks, Black Star Network is here. I'm real uh, revolutionary right now. Wow. Rolling was amazing on that. Stay hey, Black, I love y'all. I can't commend you enough about this platform that you've created for us to be able to share who we are, what we're doing in the world, and the impact that we're having. Let's be smart. Bring your eyeballs home. You can't be black on media and be scared. You dig?